Hello, welcome back to Suburban Hunt 365. I'm DJ, back in the reload room again today. And today's episode, we'll be getting back into our muzzleloader series, where today we're going to be looking at the 777 FG, which is in our gold here, and our triple FG, which is in the silver band here. Now, these are loose powders from 777 that we're going to be testing. So I'm going to be testing the low end and the high end of what they say you can shoot. And then we'll kind of figure out where the gun lands, what it likes best. Uh, for those of you that may not know, the gun in question is going to be the CVA Optima V2. And it's sporting the Konus 3x9 or 3 to 9 x 40 uh, that it comes with from Walmart. The same thing we've been using. And we will be using and continue to be using Federal 209A primers during this test. So, what I want to do, because we are getting so close to season, as a matter of fact, next weekend, as of the recording of this video, uh, next weekend is archery opener here for Tennessee. So, we are mere a month away from muzzleloader opening up here in Tennessee. And so far, the most accurate projectile that I found across everything is the Hornady ELDX. This is a 300 grain projectile, and as you can see, it's purely massive. It is just a big round. But more importantly, it is an accurate round. If you guys haven't checked it out, we did do a video running the ELDXs with the Blackhorn 209. If you haven't seen it, please follow the link above. So getting into it, what we're going to be doing today is when we weigh out these charges, we will be using weight rather than volume. I prefer weight because I do reload, and I think weight is a much more accurate way of measuring your powders. So we will be using the weight. 777 is called that because at 100 grains, it is 77.7 .7 grains by weight. So 100 grains of volume is 77.7 .7 grains by weight. And we will be using that as our medium. So looking at the charts here online, so looking at our 777 2F and 3F data sheet, we can see that they're using 80 grains to 100 grains. This is of course by volume of the 777 2F and 3F. But you can look over here on the right hand side and you see that one that says 120 grains for the 54. So to me that's going to be the magnum load. So when you do the math and you convert it over, what we're looking at is at 80 grains by volume, we're looking at 63 grains, just thereabouts, of powder by weight. So we're going to be doing 63 grains by weight. We're going to be doing the 77.7 .7 grains by weight, which is your 100 grain by volume. And then we're also going to be kicking it up to that 120 mark, which is actually 93.24, but we're just going to be running 93 grains. So that should give us our low end, the 100 grain test, and then the high end at the 93 or the 120 grains by volume. So now that we understand what we're doing and why we're doing it, let's see how it resulted. Starting out, we're going to start out with the 63 grains, and we're going to be running the 2F. Let's see how it does. All right, so that group's not awesome. It is a three and one quarter of an inch group with the 63 grains, again by weight. But looking over our velocities here, we have 1398, 1526, and 1504. That gives us an average of 1476. Uh, feet per second on there. The standard deviation is rather large because of that swing at 68.4 and again the size of that group was a three and quarter inch group. All right so now we've got a baseline we've done it in the past where it likes a little bit hotter rounds or hotter charges so let's go ahead and let's move up to the 77.7. Okay well with that one we're getting a little bit better we got a two and five eighths of an inch group, um, so a little bit better. Um, we did, of course, increase our velocities here. We have the 1527, 1574, and 1567, giving us an average of 1556. Uh, standard deviation got a lot better, though, with the 20.7 as far as our standard deviation goes. And again, that group came in at two and five eighths of an inch. So. Let's go to the high end of this, and let's see what 93 grains by weight, 120 by volume, right? Let's see how that does. All 
Oh, very nice. All right, so that's going to give us our best group so far, coming in at one and seven eighths of an inch, so just under two inch group there. Uh, like I said before, it's a 300 grain projectile. In the past, it's like that little bit hotter charge, a little bit rougher on your shoulder at the range, but when you got a deer lying down range, you're not going to matter. It's not going to matter that much, right? So let's see how our velocities reacted. You can see here that is a 1753, 1784, and a 1779, uh, giving us an average of 1771 uh, with a pretty good standard deviation of 13.58. That's, that's pretty good so far considering that our other twos were rather, rather large deviations there. So, so far, three and a quarter inch group on one side, just under two inch at one and seven eighths on the other side. I would say that anything with the ELDXs, um, really anything between this, anywhere in here, is gonna give you a group that's gonna kill, that's gonna harvest a deer. The question is, is how fast do you want this to be going? Most of us want it to be moving pretty fast. So we're gonna kind of edge towards the top end of this realm here. Um, but let's get into the 777 3F. But what I want to do before we get into this, this actual test here is I want to show you guys the main difference between the triple G, er, the triple F G here and the two F G here. We can really get in there and you can see that the granules on this are a lot, a lot bigger on the two F, a lot tinier on the three F. So it, to me, it seems like because these are tinier grains that you're going to have a much more accurate load and therefore I would hope a much more accurate projectile. All right, so now that I've kind of explained that a little bit, so you have you know the differences between you know the the three F is going to be a little bit tighter grains and two F is going to be a little bit more coarse grains. So again, I'm kind of leaning towards we should be getting I hope a better group or more consistent groups out of the three F. But let's go ahead and let's find out. We're going to be doing the same exact test that we just did a minute ago, starting at the 63 grains again by weight. Let's see how it does. Well, not an awesome start, but a kind of a similar start to what we saw with the 2F. This 3F, 63 grains, came into the 3 inch group. 63 with the 2F had a 3 and 1 quarter inch group. So we're already seeing a little bit tighter group with the slower velocities. But looking at the velocities themselves, we have 1498, 1496 and 1463 standard deviation of 16.4 so we're already seeing that as far as the standard deviation goes we're looking a lot better than before because the standard deviation for the 2f at this charge was 68 so much much better standard deviation with the triple fgs so far so let's go ahead and let's move into the 77.7 grains which is by weight 100 grains by volume and Let's see how that one does for us. Okay, that's a pretty symmetrical group right there. I just really enjoy those ones that are nice and round. They just, that's a nice group right there. I just enjoy that. Um, this one is a two and a half inch group. So, so far doing pretty good. It's leading in the 3F. Uh, we did get a better group out of the 2F, but we'll get there here in a minute. Um, so, two and a half inch group, we are looking at... 1731, 1735, and 1699 for the velocities on that. So that is an average of 1721 and a standard deviation of 19.7. So again, um, it's a little bit closer on the 100 grains, or the, excuse me, 77.7 by weight, uh, because the same one in the 2F had a 20.7 standard deviation and this one was a 19.7 so a little bit closer on deviations with the 77.7 by weight charge so let's go ahead and let's move into the 93 grains again by weight and let's see how that does all right brought it in a little bit more that's a two and a quarter inch group so we keep getting tighter and tighter as we go through this uh, that's that's what I like to see right there. So 93 grains gives us a two and a quarter inch group. Isn't gonna take isn't gonna overtake the group that we got with the 2F. Uh, but let's see how our consistency works on this one. 
So with the 93 grain test, we got a 7773, 1794, and a 1667, giving us an average of 1744. Uh, the standard deviation on this one kind of went wonky because of that last shot coming in the 1667, and that gave us a 68 grain, or excuse me, a 68 uh, feet per second standard deviation uh, between the groups. So not awesome with that particular one, but with three round test, that really just, one round can really just throw you straight off. But so far, the other two have been less than 20 on their standard deviation, so that's pretty outstanding. Um, now, we're looking at our overall, we went 63, 77.7, .7, and then 93 grains. So both of them, the 63 grain was long, wider than the 77 to the 93. So what I wanted to do there is because our black one 209, the 80 grains is really what hit the mark for them. And on top of that, I was actually, while I was shooting this video out at the range, I had one of the old timers come up to me because he saw my just plethora of muzzleloader equipment out there. And he came up and he told me, he's like, you know what, everything I've ever done with loose powders, uh, Pyrodex and any of it, he goes, everything, 80 grains has been where we stopped. Every, everything, 80 grains has always worked really well. And so far, the Blackhorn 209 kind of showed that. So with him saying that, I was like, you know what, we are going to reset. We're going to go to the range, which we did the next day. And we ran the 80 grain test, which is what I'm fixing to show you here. But that was just a little, little nugget from an old timer. 80 grains is everything they had. Now, granted, he said he used Pyrodex, most of his stuff. But Pyrodex and 777 are supposed to be the same, or pretty close to the same. Obviously, we've seen tests that kind of prove otherwise. But uh, they're not equal in every gun. Let's put it that way. That's, that's more accurate. They're not equal in every gun. So without any more ado, let's go ahead and let's get into the 80 grain. So we're going to start off with the 2FG with 80 grain charge. Ha <laughs> very nice. All right, now that's going to take the win for the 2FG right there. That is a one and three quarter of an inch group. That is not shabby at all. As we saw in the Blackhorn 209 video, we were able to get MOA, which is a one inch at 100 yards. We were able to get that group with these ELDXs using the Blackhorn 209. So right now the Blackhorn 209 has still got my win as far as accuracy goes, but three quarters of an inch longer than that, one and three quarters of an inch is nothing to shake a stick at, especially given the price of Blackhorn 209. So right now, 2FG is looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and let's get into the velocities of this. So with 80 grains uh, by weight, we have 1660, 1577, and 1576, with an average of 1604. Uh, standard deviation, not really awesome at 39.3. Uh, so not, not really great. So we did really good with the 80 grains in the 2F. Let's see if we can't get it in an entire group with the 80 grains in the 3FG. Ah, not really what I was hoping to see there. It was a decent group. This came in at two and a quarter of an inch. Again, this is at 100 yards. So not an awesome group for us, uh, at least not from what we saw coming from the 2FG. But again, two and, two and a quarter inch. So looking at our velocities, we have a 1706, a 1673, and a 1655, giving us an average of 1681 and a standard deviation of 17.7. So really right now with the triple FG, uh, the 77.7 .7, or even really the 80 grain or the 93, 93 was also at two and a quarter. So between 80 and 93 grains, I'm getting two and a quarter inch group. So I can kind of use whatever I want in that range. Uh, you have an average velocity of 1744 for the 93 as opposed to a 1681 average in the 80. So if you want that higher, you know, better penetrating round, maybe go ahead and run that 93, you know, max load uh, if that's what you want to do. Honestly, though, I'm probably going to keep my even tilt at that 80 grain because uh, looking up here at the 2FG, that gave us a one and three quarters of an inch group. And we got a two and a quarter inch group with 80 grains on the 3FG. So across both of them, I'm just going to do 80 because Blackhorn 209 and both 777s ran good with 80 grains using the ELDX. So all right, guys, we're going to go back over these numbers real quick. I know I just threw a lot at you really fast. So let's go ahead and let's pull up a chart 
and let's actually go through these numbers one more time. All right, guys, so what I've done on this one is I've tried to highlight these according to the band on the bottle. So you have the 777-2F in the goldish color. You have 63 grains, all your velocity is there with a group size of three and a quarter. You have 77.7, .7, which again is the 100 grains by volume. And that came in at two and five eighths of an inch. 80 grains gave us the best group for the 2F and the best group for the day at one and three quarters of an inch. The 93 grain kind of pulling away from that at a one and seven eighths of an inch. So getting down to the triple FG and the silver or gray is going to be your 63 grain is coming in at a three inch group, 77.7 .7 at a two and a half inch group. And both your 80 and your 93 inch, or excuse me, both your 80 and your 93 charge coming in at two and a quarter of an inch. So of course the question is, DJ, which one are you gonna use? Because you've done the testing now, you had it, what are you gonna choose? Well, the thing you couldn't see from the charts is the triple FG because it is a finer powder. I like to reuse old pellet tubes for my powder. So that way I'm not having to spend a whole bunch of money on extra tubes. Well, if your bottle has any, whatever you're carrying that in, has any static cling to it at all, that smaller 3FG is going to hold on to that powder. Now, of course, you're going to tap that into your muzzleloader to make sure all the powder, all the grains get in there, but the 2FG is a lot less susceptible because it is a coarser grain to getting stuck on your finger, on static cling inside of the tube, or something like that. So that's going to push me a little bit over towards the 2FG, even though I get a little bit better velocities out of the 3FG. So you also got to consider the standard deviation. The 777 3F had a better deviation across the board than the 2FG did. So if you've got that picky rifle that just wants to have this, 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 and this, standard deviation could come into play for you. So that one is that. So do you worry about the static cleaning and the getting on your fingers and not getting into the barrel? Or do you worry about your standard deviation? Most shooters are probably gonna tell you that they're gonna worry about their standard deviation, right? That just makes sense because the more you shoot, the, the, the more chances there are of there being a flux in your velocities. So you want that more consistent velocity across the board. So at the end of the day, as a reloader, I'm gonna pick the 777 3FG but the muzzleloader side of me wants to go ahead and choose that 2FG. Added to the fact that 2FG did give us our tightest groups, that's, that's probably the one I'm gonna pick. Well, ultimately, my decision would be the 2FG um, to take out into the woods. So some of you guys may ask, well, DJ, what about the cleanliness of this? Because you mentioned before, I mentioned before, that in the Blackhorn 209 video is an extremely clean burning round. I will tell you that both of these being triple sevens, it was a nasty day at the range. Now granted, I went through a bunch of the sluice powder putting it in there, but my hands were, my fingertips rather, were black at the end of the day because there's so much powder being burned up inside this and it's just an absolute mess. It's just, it's loose powder. It's absolutely messy. So as far as cleanliness goes, I'm still, even over these, I'm picking the black one 209 but if you can't get that and all you can find is a triple sevens, well, either one will work. But if you got two of them sitting there, it's just gonna be up to you on which one you choose. Do you want the better standard deviation? Do you want, I, you know, price may be a factor, I don't know. I, didn't, I don't remember what the prices were on these when I got them. But at the end of the day, you've gotta choose what you want's best for you. So in this video, guys, I've given you guys as much information as I could possibly give you from a range day uh, to the grains, how the grains differ, what the velocities look like. So ultimately guys, it is up to you, but you're also gonna have to run your rifle to see which one your rifle likes best. So guys, if you stuck with us this far, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys sticking in there with us, getting all this information. Guys, if you haven't already, please do me a huge favor, run down there, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button while you're down there. And as always, comment, comment, comment. Let me know what you guys think. In the next video, we had a subscriber comment about the Harvester White Lightnings in 300 grains. I picked those up. It's a pretty good showing, guys. So on that next one, be on the lookout for that 300 grain Harvester White Lightnings, which do have the green rib caged 
right? We'll get a little bit more into that on the next video. But guys, stay tuned. We'll see you guys on the next one.